I've been asked to make a critique of Portola 54's video I made last year called The Evidence for Climate Change Without Computer Models or the IPCC. There is no evidence that past CO2 rise, current CO2 rise, or future CO2 rise has caused, is causing, or will cause global warming. Okay, this statement is correct. I don't know who made it, but there's certainly no scientific evidence that uh, past CO2 rise, current CO2 rise, or future CO2 rise has caused, is causing, or will cause global warming. Actually, it's the opposite. Global warming causes CO2 to rise in the atmosphere, and global cooling causes CO2, atmospheric CO2 to fall. So that's clear from uh, the, the, all the proxy data and from uh, current, current data. So, um, for example, this paper. Now, there's no paper in the scientific literature anywhere which quantify any warming due to CO2 in the atmosphere. A lot of people find that amazing. There is a paper, uh, this one here, which quantifies a forcing which amounts to 0 0.2 watts per square meter per decade due to the increase in atmospheric CO2 over the last few decades. But that, that change in forcing is not a temperature rise. It's just a change in forcing which may or may not be um, mitigated by you know, positive or negative feedbacks. If it's, if it's totally mitigated by negative feedbacks, then it's zero. And in any case, it's 1,500 times less than even just one natural change in forcing over a six-month period. For example, due to eccentricity, the, um, the July 4th to January 4th forcing every year over that six-month period due to eccentricity increases the top of atmosphere forcing by 92 watts per square meter and on the surface by 15 watts per square meter which, as you see, is 1,500 times the 0.2 watts per square metre forcing over 10 years There's a, that is measured to be caused by the increase in atmospheric CO2. don't believe in man-made climate change because there is no evidence for it. Now, Pierce Corbin, of course, is quite correct here. There is no evidence for man-made climate change. Now, you have to bear in mind that Climate change is quite different to global warming. Global warming could be a small amount. It could be a millionth of a degree. But climate change is something that proceeds over many decades um, and has a driving force behind it, a primary driving force, which activists claim is CO2, our CO2. And there's no evidence whatever for that. So... Piers is quite right here. There is no evidence at all from Earth's long climate history that carbon dioxide has ever determined global temperatures. Well, I can understand trying to find flaws in the evidence that supports a theory or putting up evidence to counter it, but to counter the thousands of pages of data published in hundreds of scientific journals by simply doing this, well, it's a bit weak to say the least. Of course, Durkin is correct here. There's no evidence at all from Earth's long climate history. The carbon dioxide has ever driven climate change or determined global temperatures. Yeah, Pothole is trying to say that Durkin's anti-science, but uh, it's his pro-truth, which is quite different. What's the evidence that CO2 can cause global warming? Stop right there, Potty. You've written, what's the evidence that CO2 causes global warming? And yet you said, what's the evidence that CO2 can cause global warming? They are two different things. You might say it's a matter of semantics, but they actually are different. Well, there is a lot of evidence that CO2 can cause global warming through the greenhouse effect. But as to producing evidence that CO2 has caused global warming, that's a different matter. And I'd like to see some evidence for that. Also saying that CO2 causes global warming, it sounds like 
saying that CO2 is the only thing that causes global warming. I'd like you to clarify that for me. That's how they know that a doubling of CO2 from pre-industrial levels will lead to a rise in average global temperatures of about 1 degree centigrade. The only way to get the atmosphere to hold more water vapour is to warm it up, and that's what carbon dioxide does. OK, Pot is making two claims here. He's saying that doubling CO2 concentration in the atmosphere will add 1 degree centigrade to global temperatures. A lot of scientists seem to fall for this one, uh, although it's based only on laboratory work and the models and models of radioactive interactions in the, in the, supposedly in the atmosphere, but not based on real measurements from the real atmosphere. As I said before, any CO2 increase in the atmosphere has never been related to a temperature increase in, a, in, a, in the peer-reviewed literature. So there's no paper that's been published that has quantified any warming due to an increase in atmospheric CO2. Then he goes on to say that that, that increase in CO2 causes warming, which we don't know about, probably not, and then that warming causes more atmospheric water vapour, which is a more powerful greenhouse gas. Okay, so we'll um, okay, we'll see what the evidence is for more water vapour in the atmosphere. Have a look at the data here from Climate for You. Clouds, water vapour, column water vapour since uh, 1983. Reduction, reduction, reduction. Total column water vapour in the atmosphere reduced since 1983 to the present. Uh, a bit higher in the atmosphere, column water vapour is also reduced, and higher still, it's reduced again. Okay, let's look at relative humidity in the atmosphere. Again, fallen at all levels. Let's look at specific humidity in the atmosphere. Ground level, very pretty flat with a tiny perhaps increase. Four kilometers atmos uh, height, decrease in specific humidity, nine kilometers altitude, big decrease in specific humidity. Where's the extra water vapor that's uh, supposedly being thrown into the atmosphere by the extra warming that's supposedly being caused by extra CO2? What's the evidence that it's done that in the past? When CO2 is put into the air, it doesn't fall straight back down again. About half of it dissolves in water and half stays in the atmosphere. It accumulates. I guess Pothole is talking here about the 4% of CO2 emissions which are anthropogenic. He's claiming that half of it dissolves in the water, that is the oceans, I guess, and the other half, inverted commas, accumulates in the atmosphere. Well... All this, what he's saying here, is uh, is in dispute. So there's a scientific dispute about this. Well, what I'm going to do is upload a video in conjunction with this one um, by Tom Segelstad, Professor Tom Segelstad. He's a geochemist, so he's, he's going to explain this a lot better than I can. What is in dispute exactly here? That's why CO2 concentrations in the atmosphere have been steadily rising since the start of the Industrial Revolution 200 years ago. Here we have a claim from Potola that the atmospheric CO2 concentrations have been rising since the start of the Industrial Revolution 200 years ago. Well, in fact, they started rising before the Industrial Revolution started. So the facts don't accord with what he's saying. So, CO2 warms the atmosphere, and a warmer atmosphere holds more water vapour, which increases temperatures further. The basic laws of physics tell us that the Earth will heat up in response to this extra energy, and the temperature will keep rising until the increased amount of energy radiated out matches the amount coming in, what's called equilibrium. Well, this is the main part of the whole dispute between uh, skeptics and alarmists in the field of climate science. Positive feedback. Does positive feedback exist or not? Is the overall effect of all the feedbacks combi combined positive or negative or neutral? Here we've got 
fair bit of smoke and mirrors from Potala because he's telling you only half the story. He's telling you about the water vapor feedback, which is probably positive, as he says. There's also the ice albedo feedback, which is in dispute right now because there's hardly any changing in uh, global sea ice, but that is supposedly positive. Uh, but he's forgetting to mention the negative feedbacks, which are, of course, the lapse rate and the cloud, most importantly, the cloud feedbacks. Cloud feedbacks are almost certainly what determine whether there is an overall positive or negative feedback in response to CO2 forcings. And there is another little problem, and that is of scale. Uh, Potol is claiming a forcing for CO2 of 0.85 watts per square meter, as you saw there. Now, he forgets to mention that the forcing changes quite naturally every six months by 92 watts per square meter. Now, the 0.85 watts per square meter Potol is claiming is over the last hundred and odd years from CO2 forcing. This 92 watts per square meter change happens every six months. So there's a, it just illustrates how minuscule the CO2 forcing is. It amounts to 0 0.01 watts per square meter per year. That's all it is. And that compares to a natural forcing every six months of 92 watts per square meter. So if, if you have a look at my video on uh, eccentricity changes, you'll see why we get that sort of uh, massive change in solar forcing. And that's just one of dozens and, and that are operating in the climate system. It gives you some idea why it's so difficult to find an anthropogenic signal. And since those high levels of CO2 remained even after the Earth had thawed, the Earth kept warming until it became a hothouse, with coral reefs close to the poles. Yes, even with the Sun about 6% weaker than it is today, but with carbon dioxide levels 25 times higher, the Earth was much hotter than today. This anomaly is our fourth piece of evidence that carbon dioxide is a powerful greenhouse gas. Sounds reasonable, but then pseudoscience often does. So, what really caused these changes, uh, these gross changes over hundreds of millions of years to the Earth's climate? Well, it was an astronomical effect. Um, Neil Shaviv has outlined this very clearly. Cosmic rays have a lot to do with it. The, uh, the motion of the planet through the Milky Way uh, and through the spiral arms of the Milky Way, correlate very well with these gross changes in the Earth's climate, climatic record. So CO2 uh, is an effect rather than a cause. Now the person, of course, who has been looking into this the most, uh, on recent time scales at least, is Professor Henrik Svensmark. He's looked into the cosmic ray climate link through clouds, and he has experimental evidence. There's a microphysical link. There's observational evidence. And it even works on long time scales, as I said, through the work of Professor Nia Shaviv. So here we can see a nice correlation between tropical cloud cover, that's low cloud, and global surface temperatures. So the cloud cover went down from... The early 80s went down from 64% to about 60% by, by the late 90s, 1998-99. That caused the warming. Now, since then, the cloud cover has been stable, and so has global temperatures. There's a mountain of evidence behind the cosmic ray climate link. Uh, this is the carbon-14 Anomaly, which is a proxy for uh, cosmic ray intensity. And it shows quite clearly it correlates exactly with known climate changes. It correlates perfectly. The medieval warm period, the little ice age, Monda minimums there. The minimum temperature in 1690, that's where the little ice age bottomed out. 
and the huge rise since then um, causing clouds to decrease uh, particularly tropical clouds that cause the warming of the climate and it's topping out about now because solar activity has recently peaked so now we'll see a cooling climate we've just peaked at the grand maximum a lot of long-term solar cycles have peaked around the year 2000 so we're going to expect to see a cooling climate for the next 30 40 years uh, it's to do with clouds clouds determine the earth's climate nothing to do with co2 co2 is an effect and not a cause so co2 is not driving the climate of the earth so in conclusion uh, CO2, what's the evidence that CO2 causes global warming? Well, there's none. Number two, what's the evidence that CO2 has driven global warming in the past? There's none. Number three, what's the evidence, evidence it's doing that now? There's none.